So hello and welcome back to the Big Lab podcast. This is episode 16 and today I'm joined by, joined with uh, Katie Jarvis. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. No problem. How are you? Yeah, good. Um, Never been better at the moment, to be honest. (laughs) That's good to hear. (laughs) What's the weather like down south? Down south? Um, Shit. (laughs) Yeah, same here. Like I keep getting, um, you know, the memories on your stories. Oh, yeah. I keep getting memories from last year and it was so good weather. It was so hot in the first lockdown for like three whole yeah. months. And I'm actually a little bit pissed off about it. Like I love the sun. Yeah. And I've got a great rooftop and I can't even go out in the sun bay. <laughs> like it's just oh, first great. world problems. But honestly. <laughs> You'll have to go for a nine minute holiday on the beds. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, today we're gonna be speaking about why Katie is no longer an influencer, why she sort of chose to come away from the influencer world, if that's what you want to call it. Personally, I hate the word influencer to begin with, to be quite honest, but it's yeah, just I don't, what I we get branded that as. as an influencer, but yeah. we'll, we'll roll with it. <laughs> I'm only going with it because that's what we sort of get, um, sort of group does, I think, these yeah. days. As soon yeah. as you've got a fitness account now, you are an influencer unfortunately yeah. and I hate the especially, word especially if you're endorsed by a brand like there's no yeah. other word for you like you are influencing and selling something yeah and I just don't like that term <laughs> to be quite honest <laughs> um so first of all we're going to start off with when you actually started your account so we're going to start right from the start right from the start so we're starting from like 2017 at this point um yeah, yeah so I started it in my third year of uni because I just sort of got into the gym and stuff um and my handle was really embarrassing you probably don't know this because it might have changed by the time you followed me but I used to be called Little Miss Muscle and yes, like, I think I did I think I did see that actually maybe people have like joked about it or made reference to it at some point yeah my was was Miss Muscle so that's that's where that came from but it's just, oh, now I look back and I'm just like, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> but there was a story behind it. Um, basically, one time my my dad picked me up from the gym, um, still like living at home at this point. And then I, he was like, what, what have you done in the gym today? And I was like explaining that I'd hit like a new PB on a deadlift. Can't remember what it was back then. But just sort of, yeah, explained him that I was like weightlifting and stuff because he didn't really know what I did. Um, and as like a 50-year-old old man with quite old-fashioned views he was kind of like oh like you don't really want to be little miss muscle do you <laughs> and I was like yeah like why wouldn't I want to be that like why shouldn't I be that um so that's kind of why I created my account and named it as that um so although it sounded corny there is like a, a proper yeah, story behind <laughs> it. <laughs> just regretted it a bit later on yeah, about when I started working in, in a gym, surrounded by personal <laughs> right. It was very embarrassing to be like, yeah, follow me on Instagram. It was muscle. <laughs> <laughs> me standing there with absolutely no muscle whatsoever. But it, I don't, you know. It, it, it happened. It, it happened. <laughs> yeah. So what was the reason for you actually starting your account in the first place? I just like... I was just really interested in learning about the gym so I just basically started it because I wanted to talk about the gym and post videos and like connect with other people I just like I followed a lot of fitness influencers at the time as well so like I just guess I just wanted to be part of that community because it just looked really fun and yeah I just wanted to talk about it so I was like why not create an Instagram so had you been going the gym for a while before you started it or was it basically started the gym and then started the account pretty much soon uh, after? I think I'd been starting the gym like I think I'd been going to about a year I started my right. second year of uni before okay. that I absolutely hated sport hated physical <laughs> exercise I tried like hockey dance basketball like when I was in school I absolutely hated it <laughs> but I think yeah. with the gym it was like I hated team sports but I loved the fact that I could just go to the gym and do my own thing and right me um so yeah about a year in I'd started training and then I started the Instagram yeah so yeah I kind of started mine for the same reason um 
basically because I'd been going to the gym, for, well, I've been going for nearly 10 years now and I've had my account for about three. So I'd already been going to the gym. I'd been going to the gym since I was 15. Exactly. And I was 22 when I started my account. And um, yeah, the main reason was sort of similar to you seeing other fitness influencers and just wanting to be part of a community and sort of meet sort of like-minded people like my mates went to the gym and stuff but they didn't sort of get involved in the sort of social side of it as well and um yeah that's essentially why I started mine as well I feel like that's most people's motive well I think (laughs) it's changed a little bit I think these days people seem to start a fitness account just because they want free stuff yeah I know what you mean I think back in back in 2017 when a kind of like core group of us started it then Mm. it was a lot different like the whole influencer world was a lot more it was a lot less than it was now that no one did it full time really or only like two or three people big influencers did it full time there's so much money in it now isn't there yeah but now it's just booming yeah it's a it's cheap marketing in a way as well isn't it oh yeah 100 percent like um, and I get why because yeah, it's word yeah. of mouth yeah it works. everyone's going to believe word of mouth over coming direct from the company yeah yeah exactly yeah. so was your plan to always sort of become an influencer or <laughs> did it just sort of happen with the growth of your account yeah and uh, it just kind of happened um I just was posting about something I enjoyed was just engaging with an aspect of life that I enjoyed um and as I said back then, it wasn't as big as an, of an industry as it is yeah. now. So it was never like, oh, I want to make an Instagram and get sent free stuff. It was never like that. Um, yeah. It just kind of happened. Um, I also had a lot of free time, so I was still a student back then. Yeah. So I had time to constantly post, constantly engage. Um, and then I went to a few like networking fitness meetups, essentially. And that's also yeah. how it kind of grew, because it was just like meeting other like people in a similar position yeah so yeah it was never like an intention it did just it just kind of happened naturally which was quite nice um it was a, nice little, to be. a nice little side hustle to to meet new people and stuff yeah it's the best way for it to be i think because if you're constantly chasing sort of sponsorships and stuff it's so easy to tell who's out there looking yeah. for brand deals and stuff and the amount of dms i've had i don't know about you but the amount of DMs I've had of people saying, how do you get sponsored by my protein? I'm just like, not posting like three quarters of your profile as topless photos for starters. <laughs> so yeah. Post actual decent content to begin with. Um, There's a mad noisy plane outside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I can't hear it. Um, um, yeah, I know, exactly. And it's just, it's hard to explain to people. They're like, oh, yeah. how do you grow your following? And just, I just met people and networked yeah. and did what I enjoyed um yeah. to be fair like mine never blew up like some people's did like, I oh, think yeah, some have gone crazy like maximum I've ever had I think was like 18k and mm. I've lost tons now but we'll get into that <laughs> yeah. but yeah it was it was never a plan um but yeah it just happened nicely in a good way fair enough so what was actually the thing that you enjoyed most about being an influencer I, I hate saying this word by the way but I feel like I'm gonna to have to say it a lot during this podcast when you sent me the list of questions that in every single I, know. I was like oh god oh no it's horrible <laughs> um enjoy the most oh, it's just it's got to be the people that I've met yeah I, that's just like the main driver completely um being able to I feel very like privileged to be able to have gone to loads of events and just yeah. network and just meet so many people that I wouldn't have met if I didn't have my Instagram account um and like some of the people I've met are honestly now my best friends and it's just crazy and especially when I started working with my protein they I started working with them about a year after I'd created my account and it's just the the amount of opportunities I've been able to go to Manchester which I probably wouldn't have chosen to take a trip there I don't know I wouldn't um, <laughs> it's actually quite nice it's like it's a mini right. London. yeah it's um, a wannabe London isn't it yeah but it, it is a nice area some of it anyway <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah definitely the most is just the events and 
I mean, I've organized some of my own meetups through Instagram. Um, I organized on my protein one in 2019 and like Claudia Rose and Emma yeah. Fox, they, I introduced them at this meetup that I organized and now they own like a PT business together. Yeah, I've like, seen that, I yeah. love that. I think that's such a nice <laughs> thing to come out of this kind of community and yeah, genuinely just meeting people, events. My protein even sponsored our trip. I took a trip up Snowden with Joe Manning and a few other. other oh yeah, friends. I remember seeing that actually. Yeah. yeah, and sponsored. They sent us like hats, gloves, no way. Uh, little protein bars, BCA drinks, like just in return for some nice pictures up Snowden and yeah, genuinely just the people. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd I'd agree with that. The amount of people that I've met through my account that I probably wouldn't have. Well definitely wouldn't have unless I'd started it and yeah I I actually met Catherine uh, Catherine uh, Emma <laughs> uh, I met Emma at um, the BND event that we went to for the resistance bands and I've met up with her a few times after it to get some content for it and she's an absolute nutter yeah, we <laughs> yeah she's class um, <clears throat> like I was going to organise that massive event, wasn't I, last year until COVID yeah. hit, and I was so gutted. Oh, that would have been so good. I felt like, yeah, you had such a good thing prepared. Oh, it was you good. had everyone involved. All the Insta hoes were like, yes. Oh, yeah. There was so many. <laughs> Hopefully end of this year or early next year. Yeah, it'll happen this year, I think. By the looks of it, the sort of roadmap thing is going ahead as planned. So... Yeah. As soon as we get the all clear, it's getting reorganized. And the only issue I think I'm going to have is that there's going to be more people interested. Yeah, true. Which, like um, I said, just got to do multiple days. Yeah, I'm going to start a business. <laughs> <laughs> Events business for micro influencers. Yeah. Create little like gift packages for them to take away and put on their Insta stories. Yeah. <laughs> Load of uh, GW events. Fit merch. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Imagine. <laughs> But um, so we've we've said what you enjoy most about being an influencer. What um, do you least enjoy about it? I don't think there's like anything I didn't enjoy personally. Um, I think in the bigger picture, the whole influencer scene is quite frustrating, especially these days. Um, kind of in how it like misinforms a lot of information, especially in the fitness industry and. Yeah just like portraying unrealistic lifestyles and body types. Um, but that's a whole different podcast on its own. <laughs> I'll have to get you but, back on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing I personally like didn't enjoy about what I did because if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have done it. Um, yeah. So uh, there, there did come, become a point when I was called Little Miss Muscle, a lot of people mistook me for a personal trainer. Right. So I, I wrote that. I guess was a part that I kind of didn't like so that's why I changed my name to what it is now which is just my name um because yeah. I just wanted to move away from the concept that I was a personal trainer because I'm not and I don't intend to be right um, especially because I was working at a gym at this point and I felt a bit fake um posting workout videos and stuff when I wasn't qualified yeah. so yeah, yeah I just tried to move away from that but overall like I didn't yeah there's nothing I didn't like about it Fair enough. Have you ever had any online hate? Have you ever had to deal with much of that? That's an interesting question, actually, because I know a lot of people who have, but yeah. I'm so lucky and I don't think I, no, not directly. Okay. People might say things behind my back and that's their problem, but I've never had any hate comments, any hate messages. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think my account is big enough. I think has have a lot more reach and engagement they're more likely to get a lot more hate but yeah yeah luckily touch wood I, i've never i've never had that but. i think the most hate i've ever had is coming from my mates just taking the mick yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's just people taking the piss about yeah. when you do an instagram story and then they like they're like oh my protein <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're just jealous but yeah but um yeah. No. I always think, like, am I doing something wrong? Because everyone seems to get hate at some point. I'm just saying, like, no hate whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be more controversial. Just, like, bring it, bring it. <laughs> I'm just, I'd probably take it the wrong way and just go, I'd get my account banned or something like that. 
that's probably not a good idea. I mean, I'm assuming you follow James Smith, but yeah. I love the way he handles his hate. Like, yeah. just so... <laughs> The thing yeah. is, like, if a smaller account did what he did, it'd probably go the wrong way. Like, because he's got so much of a following now, I think he can literally get away with whatever he wants to say. And he's got people to back him up as well. Yeah, so. he's got loads of little minions behind him, hasn't he? <laughs> I'm actually going to see him in Manchester in July, I think it oh, is. Oh, his book tour. Yeah, I'm going to see him. And I've got tickets to go watch Darren as well. Oh, I missed out on that. They sold out so quickly. Did, oh, did you try and get the ones for London? I think so. Yeah. I was going to get the book tour as well, but it, you, it was gonna, the London one was going to be in March, and I was like, I just don't see it going ahead. Yeah. I know they've postponed it now, but I just oh, I should have. But he's actually coming back to the UK like next week. Yeah. I'm hoping I might see him like wandering around Clapham or one Because <laughs> I've met I'm him a few so. times. I don't think he'd recognise me, but... You never know. You never know. He might listen to this podcast and be like, yes, Kate's job. <laughs> I remember her. <laughs> I'll have to start tagging him in stories and hopefully season and try and get him on. <laughs> That'd be so good. I don't think I could afford him, to be honest. <laughs> I, think he would do it. I think he'd do it for free. Be nice Perhaps if he did. a lot of, like, <laughs> just doing things for free and because he wants to rather than, like... Because he, he's not an influencer, although he is, but he says he's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think with that sort of following, I think you, you kind of are. You've got a book out. You're, you're kind of an influencer. <laughs> not just one, help, two, help two books. Book <laughs> <an influencer. laughs> yeah. So at what point did you decide to stop being an influencer? And was there like a specific thing that made you want to stop? Or was it just like, it just happened? <laughs> Yeah, they're kind of there was it's just like a lot of contributing factors that kind of led up to it happening. Um, it was really strange actually because I think it all started last year during the first lockdown. I was at home with my parents and I have a lot of free time because we're all in lockdown and I was actually posting so much, I was like on top of my content game. Yeah. But then I moved to London in July and I, I honestly thought I would continue that on. I'd be like, oh, you know, I moved to London. I've so got many good spots as well in exactly. London. And I've got housemates who can come take photos of me. Like I thought I was going to be so on top of my content. I thought it would be great. Yeah. But then I was just so wrong and that didn't happen. And I just got wrapped up in this like social bubble of just living my life because I've yeah. been in lockdown, completely isolated from anybody my own age, moved to London, made so many new friends, met so many new people. So Instagram kind of like took a back seat when that happened. Um, and it's always been a side hustle. So it's always it's not always been my main priority. Yeah. I've also quit my job in the gym last beginning of last year. So I now work in comms and PR, which is not fitness at all. So I wasn't li living and breathing fitness like I used to. Um, and then, yeah, because because everything took a bit of a back seat, I think what made me decide to quit my protein was the fact that I felt really guilty because I was receiving 150 to 200 pounds worth of free stuff every month, yeah. but not doing anything to have earned that. Right. Like I was not posting, I was not promoting their products anymore. I just wasn't like active on Instagram. And so I just for a few months, I just started to feel super guilty about that. Um, which is why I guess then that just led to me contacting them to be like, hey, like, just basically broke up with my protein. <laughs> really sad. And I was so gutted to be doing it. Um, yeah. But I think for my own conscience, like, I just had to do it. <laughs> but the thing is, though, if you were able to get your voucher, that means you were hitting a sales target. So people are still sort of going to my protein through you. Yeah, so I was really lucky in the sense that because I'd been working with them for two years, mm. a lot of my friends, a lot of my old work colleagues, their clients, a lot of my big network were using my code without me having to like prompt them to do so. They just yeah. knew me and were like, oh, let's use Katie's code because I want to get some protein. So I was quite lucky in that sense. So that kind of kept me going, even though I wasn't promoting anything. Um, but I still just felt so guilty, like just it's not sustainable as well receiving that amount of free clothes oh, it's ridiculous isn't it like i've only been with them since september and like mm. i've got like a surplus of stuff like every month 
it's just there was too many clothes for one person I mean I did give a lot of it away um mm. to my friends and my family and stuff but my sister owns quite a lot of my old my protein <laughs> but yeah it, it, that was the point and that happened in January this year where I said I emailed Charlie and the guys at my protein I was like look absolutely loved working with you they're such a great company yeah. which was what was putting me off leaving because the events and stuff were just so fun and like yeah they're a really lovely company to work with and I'm sure you'll agree like they're just yeah. very easy and yeah such they're good so people. good um they're almost too good to us yeah honestly like they just treated us so well I've been with other companies who haven't been that and yeah they're just nothing compares really yeah um who do you have who's your, who's your manager I'm well curious. it was Josie mm. but she's left now she, uh, she left know. literally like this week um, oh, okay. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say but she put in our group chat saying that she was leaving so she's not in our group chat anymore so I think my new manager is Charlie Charlie's so nice yeah I got an email through the other day it's such a small world because I met Josie at the very first fitness meetup I went to in 2018 I met Josie there and she wasn't working for my protein at that point and then yeah. when I joined my protein a few months later she then joined as like the, the affiliate managers or whatever their job title is um, yeah yeah it's just such a small world like things Mad, just isn't it? around like the, you think as well like the amount of fitness accounts that are out there these days but it seems like there's like almost a small like it's weird group of people that all know each other yeah definitely. and then there's just like thousands of other accounts but there's like a, a close almost close network there is it, and that, that's what I really like and that's what I don't want to leave that network like although yeah. we're on this podcast talking about how it's like not an influence <laughs> if you organize a fitness meetup like I'm 100% there and yeah. I'm still chatting to all the people who I've met like I still meet up with them and still chat to them I don't want to leave the community I'm just leaving the, the title I guess or <laughs> whatever you want to call it <laughs> you reckon you'd ever go back do you know what recently because I've recently gone well I'm nearly plant-based but not quite but I was yeah. like oh I'd love to work for my vegan you know the yeah. vegan umbrella of my protein so I don't know maybe in the future because that's something I really really care about so I think I would put the time and effort into promoting their products because I do yeah. care about like being a plant-based so we'll stay yeah, tuned we'll on that one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Charlie, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a link. Me. <laughs> so, are you happier now that you've taken a step back? Do you feel like a weight off your shoulders, sort of thing, or has much Slightly. changed? I think, I think I'm, I'm happy in every aspect of my life at the moment. I saw your story about that the other day, actually. Yeah, I just think, and that just happens that Instagram isn't part of that. So, I don't think I'm happier because I've. I'm not as active on Instagram anymore. I think I'm just happy in the rest of my life and Instagram and being an influencer doesn't come into it anymore. Yeah. Like there is a slight weight lift off my shoulders as I was mentioning about the guilt for my protein and stuff. So that, that's gone, which is nice. And I, there's no pressure to like fill a certain quota every month or things like that. Like my job's already stressful enough. I don't, I don't need that extra, <laughs> that extra pressure of promoting things. Yeah, it is time I'm consuming thinking. as well. Like, yeah, it is. Like you, I don't know how, you, how do you have the time to do all of your like reels and your Instagram TVs? Like, you put <laughs> out so much and you but, work full time. And I'm like, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> that IGTV, like, um, you know, Manny. I oh, yeah. Manny. He, he asked me the other week, actually, um, like, how do you do your IGTV videos? He was like, do you script them or anything? I was like, no. <laughs> just turn the camera on and start yeah. chat just start chatting That's a load of rubbish and to be fair it takes me about like I quickly download them onto my phone and edit it within 10 15 minutes maybe and then it's done like it that an IGTV doesn't take me very long what takes me time is a YouTube video that can take me a while mm, I, yeah. I still only edit on my phone I don't have a Mac or anything like I'm on my work's laptop now which is why the camera's so crap and I look like a ghost <laughs> you holiday love <laughs> no, definitely like I'm I'm pale but I'm not that pale yeah um but yeah like content takes a long time to sort of get 
I've been rubbish since the gyms have opened, mainly because my gym's absolutely chocker. Like, I've been going oh, to the yeah. gym thinking, like, I've been turning up thinking, I forgot something here. I'm, like, I, am I wearing shorts? What? Like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what have I forgot? And um, I, I've just not taken my camera with me, <laughs> basically. Because I'd usually take a camera and my tripod to, it's, like, film my work. Yeah, on. it's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I, I used to find that really cringe. But the, mm. the thing I find funny about Instagram is if someone sees you in the changing rooms or on the gym floor taking a selfie, mm. everyone judges you. But as soon as they see that photo uploaded to Instagram, they're like, oh, yeah, give that a like and comment. <laughs> exactly. But you don't like seeing how it's created, though, and you like seeing the actual final product online. Yeah. And I just find that such a backwards, like, thing. See, as well with me, so my local gym, I will not go in there and vlog. Like, I will not go and, like, you know, do, like, a full-on YouTube vlog. Yeah. I, I went to a gym literally about 15 minutes away, the, like a, another JD gym, a new one, and I was fine. <laughs> like, people are still looking because, like, what the hell is he doing with the camera? Yeah. But, like, it just didn't bother me. And it, it, I think it's basically just because I don't know anyone in that gym, whereas my local gym now, like, there's so many, like, so many of them follow me. Like, some, I, I don't even know some of them, but I know they follow me. And I've got all my mates there. And I've got like people from Instagram that I now know that are there. And I'm just like, nah, <laughs> I'm not standing there with a tripod like this, like talking. Like, nope. Yeah, it's so much easier to do it. And when you're just anonymous and no one's like ripping yeah. pissed you in the background. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to do another one on Saturday, actually. So that should be fun. <laughs> um, yeah, because yeah. I used to work in a gym. I used to hate, oh, just like the thought of all the personal trainers judging me, watching me film. Mm -hmm a workout video or something like I just found it so cringe because I'm like I'm not a professional I'm not a personal trainer I'm not qualified yeah I really shouldn't be doing this <laughs> but yeah to be fair I've been confused a few times on Instagram for being a personal trainer I'm like no that's why when I said last year oh, I'm going to do my PT qualifications I had so many messages off people going I thought you were already a PT I was like <laughs> that's the thing like people just assume because you're a fitness instagram like they think that's mm. what you want to do or like that's what career you want or something like that which yeah for most people for a lot of people it is um, yeah mine's just very different like i want to work in book publishing which is just an entirely different industry so yeah i actually started a book instagram because I, I was trying to I spend that, so. more time on like a, a more wholesome platform <laughs> <essentially>. <laughs> um but i've actually been really lazy with that too so I think I think I'm just lazy with posting content I think I'd just rather I don't know be in the present who knows no to be fair I, I completely understand that and um like on weekends I try and stay off Instagram as much as I can yeah just to sort of enjoy my weekend because it does take up so much time like especially like you said with my protein sending you stuff like they don't only send you your voucher for the month sometimes you'll get like drops and stuff and you need to make content for that as well it's like there's a constant yeah. pressure to get content out there and um, and you want to make it good well so you don't just want to half ass the time so you really have to like put in some yeah some planning it depends if the lighting is good like if it's a shit day and like yeah i don't think people realize how much they, the photos look easy when they've been posted or the videos yeah. look easy when they've been posted but it's, it's crazy how much effort we put in for like a one minute video or like a post yeah. that's almost like two seconds yeah like I, I, I did one actually for it to go on the my protein story a couple of weeks back and it was like my morning routine and it took me I think I did it over like two days because I couldn't be bothered doing the whole like recording the whole <laughs> thing <laughs> and um, I had to get my brother to help me and then it must have took us about an hour in the morning there to like piece it all together and they wanted it to be a specific length so I was like where can I cut something out? <laughs> where, where can I make, like, I still need this, but I need to make it shorter and things like that. And then uh, they put it on the story and they didn't even tag me. I was like, oh, no. I was like, I just spent like hours <laughs> like recording and editing this video for not, like, I didn't even get any sort of like recognition for it. And it was on like a platform, like 750,000 people. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I was just like, tag you. I, I, I messaged Josie. I was like, I've not been tagged. Like, cause I didn't even see it. Someone else sent it me. I think it was my brother. He was like, um, yeah. like my brother's girlfriend said, oh, your George is on like my protein story. I was like, am I? <laughs> been up oh, for like five hours. I didn't even know. I was like, yeah. wow. 
Oh, that's, I think, yeah, they did that to me once. I think they reposted one of my photos and yeah, I, I didn't get tagged. So annoying. It's really strange. Surely they, they want to kind of show their influences. That's what I thought, but never mind. I should have <laughs> put my own tag on the video. I should have like watermarked it. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> do that next time. Yeah, will do. No. <laughs> never mind. But is there anything else you'd like to say about why you've, you're no longer an influencer or have you sort of? I don't really know. I, like I said, I don't think I'd ever have called myself an influencer, but I suppose <laughs> because I was endorsed by my protein, I can, I can see why I kind of was. But I don't know. I, I don't think I'm fully moving away from it. Like I've still, I'm still open to doing like collabs and stuff, but more on like a one-off basis than having like a long-term yeah. affiliation with someone where there's that like pressure to perform something each month or something like that. I just, I just don't, I don't have the energy and it's not my priority for it anymore. But like I've done, oh, I still need to post these pictures, but I did a photo shoot for a gym based in London about a couple of months ago now. And yeah, he's used photos him. for his Instagram and um, website, I'm all over his website. So that's, that was really fun. Like I've never done anything like that before. So I'm still open to, to doing fitnessy collabs and things like that. But I guess it's, yeah, it's just a long term. I do miss my protein, but I'll get massive FOMO when they start doing events again. I've got a feeling you're going to be coming back. Oh God. Do you think if <laughs> I have to come back, they'd let me? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Especially considering you've been there with them for what, like three years? Yeah, yeah. Did take you back. I'll come back maybe for my vegan. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah I'll a be little sorry. subtle hint to get a DM from my vegan there. <laughs> I'll tag them in the YouTube. Yeah, I'll be so. Yeah, I'll get a FOMO if I see all of you lot at an event and I can't come. So we'll just have to do our own, and we will. It's all right. I'm I'm gonna reorganize that one. I've still got my spreadsheet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that spreadsheet's gonna get longer and longer. Oh, I know. <laughs> it was you know what the amount of dms i sent out for that and i was like constantly chasing people i was like the only reason i'm sending you so many dms is because you said you want to come and now you're not replying and i don't want you to miss <laughs> out and it's just like just reply either way yes or no i feel like it's it's such a hard job trying to organize a massive group of people well i asked 50 people and 35 of them were going to come and i was just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was like I, w I would have been so stressed out that weekend, like so stressed because it's down. <laughs> it's basically down to me if something goes wrong. Yeah, literally. Like people are tra like traveling from all over the country. I was just like, oh my god. I think. Oh well, yeah, I suppose the one I the one I organized was so small. There was like five of us, and we stayed in like a little Airbnb, so that yeah. was manageable. But yeah. yeah, there is a lot of pressure being the, the one to like instigate the the meetup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially like I kind of knew some of the people, but not like enough to be like, yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> but we'll see. I'll uh, I might I might do a smaller one first. Yeah, do you like one for people? Do you want for your podcast guests? You yeah. know, VIP, and then we can of expand us. to more people. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've met I've met most of the people I think I've, who've been on your podcast. I've met uh, Ellen. Yeah. Taylor, Amy, some of the I guys. Know. Yeah, I've met most of them, so yeah. good to meet you. Big old little squad meetup, won't it? Yeah, let's do the, it. The Big Lab podcast on tour. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that, like a 16-person <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how, what's the record for most people on one podcast at once? I'm going to Google it. Wow, the sun's come out. Look at my face. <laughs> Or the YouTube yeah, view. Not here. <laughs> me have a stripy face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Most people on a podcast. We should definitely do that. I feel like because you're allowed to meet in larger groups now. Yeah. I'm happy to come to Manchester, or you guys can come to London. I feel like we're all over the country, aren't we? Really. Yeah. There's a um, there's a big spread. When I was looking at it, um, the reason why we did it in London, it was just the easiest place to go to if it was going to go ahead. And quite a lot of people were down that way anyway. So it just made sense. And I could get a train for like 27 quid, I think it was, return. 
Yeah, it's not too I didn't bad. get that back either. I, I booked a non-refundable. <laughs> but yeah. Was this meant to be like? When was it meant to be? First lockdown. It was gonna be. So I think we went to lockdown on the Tuesday. Let's have a look. And it was on that Saturday, I think. Oh God. <laughs> so we went full lockdown on the twenty fourth. Yeah. And it was going to be on the 28th. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so Bad timing. Bad timing. <clears throat> yeah, because like things were slowly like shutting down the week before, weren't they? And I was like messaging in the group saying, is everyone still okay? And then people starting to flake. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I was went... down. I was so naive. I was like, yeah, like nothing's going to close. Yeah. I think I was out in Clapham like the week before everything shut yeah I was out in Liverpool I hate myself because I put up like an Inst- Instagram story of like the bar I was in <laughs> like what virus and I just feel like such an idiot because a year later we're here we're like there's still so many restrictions it's- I, I started getting like messages off people so like you know because the gyms were still open like yeah. that week before and people yeah. were like why are you in the gym and I was like well because they're not shut that's why mm-hmm. like I'm allowed to be here and they're like do you not care about coronavirus people are dying I was like I was like, people are dying for everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's loads of diseases out there. Look, people die every day. <laughs> so it's like the gyms are still open. That's the thing. I feel like a lot more people, we're talking about Instagram hate. Like, I feel like a lot of people have got a lot more Instagram mm. hate over the past year because they've been like, why are you socializing with them? You're, you're not allowed to be socializing yeah. or like no social contact. Just, yeah, oh, just, just live your life. I love mine. I was, stayed a bit quiet because I haven't want, wanted people to be like judging and judging a situation that they don't actually know anything about or yeah, yeah I'm just keeping myself to myself <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the best way yeah 100%. all right I think we'll uh, wrap this one up here before we ramble a little bit too much <laughs> yeah ramble about gym meetups that yeah won't we'll, be carry we'll carry on <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry we'll carry that on after this um, <laughs> so yeah if you've made it this far thank you for listening if you're watching on youtube make sure you drop a like and if you're new subscribe and we will see you in the next one